What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Boy, brothers is going down in the entertainment industry. We've seen our boy R. Kelly go down. Diddy is on the run. And then there's Russell Simmons, all right? So those of you who can remember Russell Simmons, Russell Simmons, one of the first guys that really was a part of that era in hip hop that was profitable. I and mean, he wasn't as rich as some of the other guys, Diddy and what you see today, but he's one of the first icons that, that kind of made some money. So, you know, he was doing his thing, doing his thing, right? And one of the criticisms that, you know, we would have for people like him, Dre, you know, Master P came a little bit later, was these were young black men that didn't have any mentorship and the mentorship that they did receive probably came from people from the streets because hip hop was very closely tied to illegal activity. So those were some of the guys that were investing in that time. So, you know, nobody expected to see hip hop to be what it was and it blew up into a big economic opportunity. It took guys who would have never made it in life into places where they can make millions it created an industry for people who would have probably been like a bus driver or, or maybe in jail. If it wasn't for hip hop, it wouldn't have been nothing. And that's Russell Simmons, right? Def Jam, as we know, was what he co-founded. Now, of course, and I, and I try to tell black men this all the time, when you're the man, you're going to start getting opportunities with women, right? And the next thing you're gonna get is a whole bunch of people who are yes men. Those are two things you get. A lot of chicks laughing at jokes they wouldn't laugh at if you wasn't rich and a whole bunch of yes men that's gonna let you rock, okay? That's what you're gonna get. And at the time that Russell Simmons and Diddy and them was coming up in the black community and hip hop, no mentorship, doing whatever they want. Now, we're gonna also talk about this alleged, you know, sexual allegations going on against these men. And again, it could have happened. I'm not saying that it didn't, but we gotta look at the time. Right at this time in hip hop, the things that dudes did with ladies behind the scenes, uh, albeit it could be disgraceful depending on what is true and what is not true, groupies and stuff like that, a whole lot of stuff back then that might not have looked like or seemed like assault in some cases because the time was different. And I'm pretty sure that these guys didn't think about it the same either, right? But now, if you look back at what happened in hip hop, then you're like, oh, that's crazy, right? Same thing with you know, the, the way that men um, cheated women in, in the 40s. At that time, it was, you know, seemed to be okay. But if you look at and read the story of how a man treated a woman right now in 2024 and 1944, what is a good husband back then is probably abusive, controlling, narcissistic man right now. So Russell Simmons, being that he had allegations, he left the country, moved to Bali in, in Indonesia. He's there at his gym at... Bali Health, a GDOS Bali Health and Wellness Resort, which is owned by him, he gets served. A process server, Daniel John Ayub, caught up with him there and served him. What did he serve him with? Well, basically, legal papers. Now, Drew Dixon, a former staffer of Def Jam Recordings, took legal action against Simmons for defamation, right? Having alleged that, you know, she was graped in 95 okay now simmons she's saying that he concerted a malicious campaign to discredit her undermining her grape accusations from six different women he was on the podcast um he calls her a bold-faced liar he said that all his relationships were consensual okay and he also said that listen he slept with thousands of people now i don't even know how much <laughs> How much time you got in a day to, 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 to clap a thousand of cheeks? And these are six people. That was in death with Graham Messenger podcast. But at the end of the day, don't nobody care about those thousands. Everybody is looking at the downfall out of a lot of men who come from that era where you could pretty much get away with everything. And this is what black men got to look at today. Think about today, right? I don't care where you are in the world. You in you in you in Africa. You in you in Colombia. Listen, the way, and I'm telling you, the way that y'all think that it might not catch up to you, it will, all right? I, I, I just, now I'm even scared to do anything. One of my partners had invited me to a certain little kickback. It was gonna be some chicks there. And I was like, oh yeah? He's like, yeah, man, you should come through. 
Um, they're going to be some baddies there. And it was kind of like, you know, in an environment where, you know, it it, 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 it could be some, you know, some clapping to the cheeks that might go down. You know what I mean? This is a while back. And I was like, man, as much as I would have went, if it was like 10 years ago, I would have gone. But because people know who I am, some folks know who I am, all it needs to be is me just, you know, rubbing some kneecaps from the back and getting put on social media and somebody coming back saying five years later, he made me rub his kneecaps. So now with men that got money, you got to look at the game differently because you're seeing what's going on with these people. And again, when you're talking to ladies, some ladies are going to be okay with what you're saying right now until they get mad. Now, I'm not saying these guys are not guilty because we've seen evidence of celebrities who were guilty. But what I want to tell you is you got to watch yourself because you really don't know what you're dealing with, brother. If you're going to be a successful man right now, this is the best and the worst time of being a successful man. Let me tell you why. It's the best time because it's easier to get money in an economy that is a service market and it's international. It's a lot of information out there that wasn't out there 20 years ago, right? So it's easier to get money now than ever before. It's also lonelier now because of all the things that can happen with somebody losing the money. Like anything you do, somebody is watching. Somebody's trying to, you know, take a shot, trying to expose you. You know, so now if you're known for being a, a well-off person, you're scared and you need to be scared. Black men gotta be like so nervous, right? And some of these guys work all their life. And then at the time you start getting, you know, late twenties, thirties, and, and in the case of, you know, Diddy and Russell Simmons, they was making money when they was younger. Some of us, we don't get our taste of money until our mid thirties. Then you done waited all your life to clap cheeks. Then this come out and this pop off because they're going to make themselves available to you, man. And you're going to have to say sometimes, brother, let me, let me go and hang out with Paul Molina, brother. I, I know y'all hate to say it. Paul Molina it up lotion the palms up brother some of y'all just need to lotion the palms up and you're gonna have to stop doing all of this thirsty stuff like threesomes foursomes that's how ti and got caught up just just it's a whole booty clapping banded exercise y'all gonna have to not do that in the states if you're gonna do it you gotta go somewhere else and do it you should never experience stuff like that even dwight howard even the dudes in the lgbtq is getting out coming out saying somebody rape me it ain't safe for nobody so you really got to get your only fans on you got to get your certain videos on you know is it x i don't know if it's x uh, something you gotta get something going on man and you know if you're gonna deal with one or two or something like that you gotta limit it but that whole let me just clap everybody's cheeks it's not gonna work man because you know, if it's true, then you're going to jail. If it's not true, then that's somebody who's disgruntled because they felt that their life was supposed to change because of you. It didn't. Now they mad. And a lot of brothers need to start friend zoning women. A lot of black men need to start friend zoning women. I don't care how beautiful they are. Like, oh, how you doing, boo? Uh, don't even call them that. How you doing? You look very... Oh, don't even say that. How you doing? Good to see you. You need to friend zone them, especially in the workplace. Especially that. It's, it's not going to work. So guys, we just dig it's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I put your fire. You just heard the bell. We're out.